What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today we are talking about whether or not you can use the DJI Osmo Action to take photographs and more specifically whether or not you can use it to take landscape photographs. Don't know why I've got the box here, that is empty. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got the actual Osmo Action right here. Now, there's been a lot of talk about this Osmo Action recently. My video I did um, comparing this to the GoPro seems to have really taken off lately. It's got like 13,000 views or something. Go check it out right here if you want to. I'll put a link up there for it. Um, loads of questions about it. Lots of people asking me opinions about different bits. But one person asked me a question that made me think... That's a good question. And their question was, can you use it for photographs? And of course the answer is yeah, of course you can. But this person specifically asked whether or not it would be any good for taking landscape photos. And I thought, you know what? I've never tried it, but we are going to find out. I thought it would make for a good video for us to try it, set it up in order to take those photos, go and give it a try and see how good we can take that photo of a landscape scene. Now there's a few immediate considerations, right? First of all, I need to think about what gear I'm gonna need to aid me to get that photo. Second of all, I need to think about the settings and like what I need to do to set this up ready to take that photo. And lastly, of course, we need a landscape that we can go and take a photograph of. So first of all, what am I gonna need in order to be able to do it? Well, one of the first main things that I always think is essential for taking landscape photographs is a tripod. Luckily, I have one right here. This is the tripod that I use. This is just my regular tripod that I use for my cameras. This isn't like a special Osmo Action tripod. This is a full on regular tripod with the ball head, the plate on the top, everything ready to go. Now, in order to better use that effectively, I'm also going to need the cage from the Osmo Action. I do normally use the metal cage. You guys might have seen in some other videos. This is just the regular cage that comes with the Osmo Action. And I've attached on the bottom of there the shoe, which has the thread that I can then screw this into the top of the tripod. So we will be able to have an Osmo Action attached directly to the full height main tripod. The reason we're doing that is because we want to better set this up to get the camera as stable as we possibly can. I'm probably going to be using a lower shutter speed, which we'll get into in a second, and that makes that tripod and the stability that the tripod gives really, really important. So cage aside, tripod over here. Next thing we need to think about is the settings. Now, you guys who are familiar with the Osmo Action might already know there's loads of different settings you can do. You can set it up in video, in photo mode, lots of other things as well, slow motion, all sorts like that. But we, for this, are just gonna set it into the regular photo mode. There's different modes within photo mode, like multi-frame burst and stuff like that. We're going to be using just the regular photo. There's a few different ratios that we can use. For this, I'm gonna use 16 by nine. I'm gonna set it up as 16 by nine ratio, mainly because that's the best ratio to then show you guys the photo afterwards. And we're also going to set it up in countdown mode. I'm gonna be setting this up with a five second countdown. Now, you might be asking why I would do that. The reason, again, comes down to stability. I'm gonna have this camera set up on the tripod and with the size of it and how small it is, when I press that that button to take the photo, chances are I'm gonna cause a bit of vibration in the camera. So with the countdown, I can press the button, let go of the camera, it's got five seconds to stop moving and fully get itself settled, and then it will take the photo. I use that same technique all the time when I don't have my shutter release for my main camera. Really good way to be able to take decent photos if you don't have a remote cable shutter release. So how's about the actual settings for the photo itself? Well, for that, I'm gonna set this up into manual mode okay so you can set it up into manual or automatic in the photo mode and I'm going to be shooting it in manual mode that gives me the most control over the settings which is what I really want now straight away one of the problems you potentially have with this is it does have a fixed aperture some of you guys will know with a regular camera you can change your aperture all the way from like 2.8 or even lower all the way up to like f9 f11 normally for a landscape photo you would try to shoot at like f9 f11 something like that because that gives you a really big depth of field 
However, the problem with the Osmo Action is it has a set aperture of f2.8, which means I cannot change that. That's gonna be set for me f2.8. It does, however, kind of focus to infinity, so I'm hoping that that will be okay and that won't really interfere with our shot too much. But anyway, forget aperture, what can we control? So the next thing for me is gonna be the ISO level, right? Now, I want to be able to keep this ISO level as low as I can. So basically, I'm gonna be setting it to ISO 100. That's because I want the least grain possible in the image. I want to keep the image quality as nice as I can. So I'm going to control the exposure entirely with the shutter speed. I'm not worried about having to use a long shutter speed, or sorry, a slow shutter speed, I should say, because it's gonna be on the tripod, I can get it nice and stable, and actually, if anything, with the landscape I'm intending on shooting, a slower shutter speed might be quite nice, because there might be some movement in the water without giving too much away. That is all I will say for now. And that's pretty much how I'm going to set up the camera. That will be how we do it. That will be the settings that we use. So if I do that, I make sure this bad boy is fully charged. I get it in my bag. The only thing we need to do is find a nice landscape that we can take a photo of. Now, I don't wanna be taking a landscape photo in my garden or like my road out the front of my house. I think we need something a little bit nicer. I'm thinking a sunrise. I'm thinking somewhere beautiful we could go and I think I might have a spot. Let's go. So here we are at Happersburg Beach. <laughs> now that might look like 10 seconds to you guys but actually we have traveled like 200 something miles to get here, but this is the location. Check out what I mean. Good morning guys and welcome to a very, very bright and early morning at Happersburg Beach. I got up at just after 4am today to do this and I'm absolutely knackered so I'm sorry if the eyes are a little bit looking, uh, looking a little bit dark and saggy, let's put it that way. So let's get some awesome shots and let's see how we go. Okay guys, so look, I hope you can hear me because it's quite noisy out here. So we've been set up here on the tripod, uh, tripod at Happensburg Beach. Now, I've done a lot of the photos already because I just wanted to make sure that we got them right. But we're set up here at the beach. I've got the uh, Osmo Action on the tripod. So I've got it set up like as per you would a regular camera if you're taking a landscape photo. Uh, I've got it in photography mode, of course. So not video, it's in photos. And I'm shooting uh, in manual mode, so not in automatic. I've got it in manual rough settings that I've gone for. ISO um, low, so to 100. Uh, obviously the aperture is controlled, but then shutter speeds, I've played with some different shutter speeds, trying to get the right balance between the water and ideally trying to get a little bit of movement in the water. Um, that has been a little bit hard, but I've then been playing around with different shutter speeds to try to get the light just right in the sun. I think it's come out all right. This is an awesome location. We're now gonna head back inside, gonna drive all the way home so I can chat to you guys back in the office and we can see how these photos came out. just like that we are back in the office we're back home so for those of you guys who are interested that was a place called Happersburg Happersburg Beach uh, on the kind of north east coast of Norfolk beautiful beautiful countryside really recommend going up to that area if ever you're traveling around the UK and you'd like to go somewhere with nice coastline nice beach nice scenic landscape photos great place to go the lighthouse there is beautiful as well you would have seen that in the drone footage that I put into the video just now really great place to go so how did we get on don't worry 
wait, I'm not going to wait too long before I show you the actual photo, but I just want to talk about it first because, of course, I have now played with the photo, I've edited the photo, um, and it was interesting. One thing that I noticed definitely uh, is that the editing process for the Osmo Action was a little bit harder than editing uh, the equivalent photo that I took with my EOS R because I took some photos with my EOS R at the same time whilst I was down there. One of the big differences was the dynamic range. I was really able to get a lot of detail back out of the shadows and the highlights and the colours from the EOS R and I wasn't able to do that as well with the Osmo Action. I had to play a lot more with the colours. I, I couldn't get the same level of vibrancy from the colours with the Osmo Action that I was able to with the EOS R. So I think rather than talking about that too much more, let me just show you the photos, you'll see what I mean, and then we'll talk about it some more. So first of all, the photo right here, this was taken with my EOS R. And I think it's important to show this one first because it represents what I think is a pretty decent landscape photo of that beach, if I say so myself. And you can see it's got a load of color, lots of the pinks, the oranges. I've really managed to get some color and some vibrance out of that photo. Really pleased with it actually, I quite like that photo. Fairly simple one, but it doesn't really matter. It's a nice, simple photo, a bit of movement in the waves, some color in the sky, and in the sea really really pleased with it so by comparison when I show you this Osmo action photo in one second the biggest thing you're gonna notice I think is a difference in the vibrance and the color now of course I could manipulate that further and do all kinds of further edits with it and play with levels in Photoshop and everything else but I, I didn't want to almost um, cheat too much I wanted to try to show a photo that was a, a genuine reflection of, of the photo that I took there on the beach so without further ado, let's get it. Here we go. This is the photo from the Osmo Action. Now, first thing I'm going to say is I'm pretty pleased with it. If I took that um, as a landscape photo, I wouldn't be looking at it thinking, oh, it's rubbish. I'm actually fairly pleased with it. I quite like it. Yes, when I'm critical and I compare it with the photo from the ESR, the colours feel a bit less exciting and that kind of puts a downer on it. But if you take the ESR photo out the equation and you just measure that as a a photo on its own it's not half bad quite like it and actually I think the answer is yes you can take a landscape photo with the DJI Osmo action because there you go there's one right there <laughs> And whilst it might not be the best landscape photo in the world, I've, I've done it. I've got a decent shot. It's quite a nice composition. The colours are there. It's focused. So the question is, can you take landscape photos with the DJI Osmo Action camera? Yes, you can. Should you be buying that camera if you are primarily a landscape photographer? Probably not. But if you're somebody who's looking for an action camera to attach to your bike or whatever else, and you're thinking, you know what, my budget's a bit tight, I'd also like a regular camera. Well, you know what? If you've got this bad boy with you, it's good for your action camera. It's good to stick in your pocket and take on holiday. You're out and about, you can take some snaps of your friends, get your selfies, and you know what now? You've got a bit of confidence that you will even be able to grab a few landscape shots with this camera. Guys, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button on the video. It helps me out loads and loads, makes my video more successful, helps promote my channel. That's why I ask you to do it. And I'm really, really grateful for you guys that do. If you're new to the channel, you've not seen me before, think about subscribing. Loads of other videos on my channel that you should go check out. I've done several Osmo Action videos. Go check those out. Loads more coming in the future. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Lastly, make sure you go check out my Instagram at Rob Sandals right here. It's the best place to go see my landscape photos. You better see both those two landscape photos over there and loads of other landscapes that I've taken as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you, I will see you on the next video.